Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Game Master and welcome to my channel. Sorry for just the thumbnail for a video, but I'm going to be doing a rant on the new Castlevania series for Netflix. I've been kind of on a long weekend. I had to attend a relative's wedding and it was pretty fun, but it was clear across the state I live in and I live in a fairly large state, so... The entire weekend was spent up and I'm pretty exhausted, but one of the things I did while I was waiting in my hotel room was I saw this on Netflix and I decided to watch it. And what did I think of it? Well, it's actually, I think, one of the best, if not if not better, at adaptations of video games to TV series. They did most of it right. First off, they picked a game that was fairly old, so it's not going to offend any new fans. They don't have anything to worry about botching with the story. As far as the continuation of this game series, the, this storyline has actually probably been retired for good, even if Konami does make more Castlevania games. Second thing they did, they picked the story that they were going with correctly. By going with Castlevania 3, a game who on the NES had a really simple story, but the story was later expanded on with hits like Symphony of the Night and Castlevania Curse of Darkness to where some of the points on the NES game that were just glossed over were given a more mature look later on in the series. This animated series is a good chance to go retell that story and give it more depth that it didn't get in the NES games. From Curse of Darkness and Symphony of the Night, we realize that the whole problems that started with Castlevania 3 started with the death of Dracula's wife, but we never really understand who she is. And then um, we also know that the whole problems in Castlevania 3, it wasn't just another Belmont taking a trip up Castlevania to destroy Dracula. No, there was a war going on, and, and that Dracula is indeed out to kill all the humans and Trevor Belmont is kind of the only one that's going to stop them and the series does dive into that so let's get into um, what the series is about now it's only four episodes at the moment but the first episode is indeed the best and my favorite as it actually explores Dracula he was the longtime antagonist of the series each game usually had you going up his castle to destroy him because he was up to no good. Here we actually get to see him develop some, and it's actually pretty fun. We find out how he meets his wife, Lisa. She just strolls in his castle because she wants to ask him a few questions because she stumped on a few medical science problems she's facing, and she thinks he has the answer. And when she stands up to him and doesn't back down, he falls in love with her and... You know, for a brief time, he becomes human again, and the fact that they also kind of design him around the way Matthias looked in Castlevania Lament of Innocence, just more ghoulish, is really good. And we see him act human for a while. You know, you see him return from a trip. He's dressed in human clothing. He's walking. He's not transforming into a bat. He's walking. He's living his life as a normal human until his wife dies, and then when that happens, he just goes mad with grief and decides to destroy everything including his son who tries to stop him and that's also explored um the rest of the series isn't quite as good but it's still fun and the capacity for fun is still there um trevor belmont i think is the weakest aspect of the series but i know what they're going for here they kind of want to do a redeemable hero as well as give him a little bit of depth so for the first few episodes, he's a bit of an unlikable jerk, but he has his reasons for being an unlikable jerk. Um, if you paid attention to the Castlevania 3 storyline, you know that the Belmonts were kind of thrown out of Europe. Now, the game kind of just glosses over with, it's like, yeah, we're cool with being, you know, thrown out of Europe, we'll send someone to help you. In this series, though, it obviously affects him. It's obvious he's now kind of disgruntled. Everything has been taken from him. People are afraid of him. And he's basically willing to let the world burn because these jerks deserve it. So I'm hoping we get to see in later episodes his character develop and him going through an arc where he does become the 
Belmont-esque vampire killer that we see in the more modern Castlevania games and not this drunken jerk all the time. I really do hope to see that. Um, the rest of the characters, we do see a little bit of Alucard. He isn't really developed. You only see him for a little bit during the first episode, only to get his butt kicked by his father. And then towards the end of the last episode, he makes an appearance similar to the way he's introduced in the game. Trevor finds him sleeping in a coffin, and they get into a fight. And in this version, Alucard kind of wins, but only at a stalemate. And then when he sees that Trevor is willing to go all the way, he isn't just some drunkard. He backs off and kind of recruits him in this fight. So I'm looking forward to that. Saifa Belnez is going to be a decent character. She's a bit too squeaky clean compared to the rest of the cast, but hopefully they'll do something with her there. We don't see anything of Grant the Nasty, so hopefully we'll see some of him later. Um, the action scenes are pretty decent. It has a lot of gore in it, and sometimes it fits and sometimes it doesn't. For the most part, um, I was pretty good with the battle scenes and I was good with the Carnage. This is supposed to be horror. This is supposed to be a modern day Castlevania retelling. So yeah, you know, it's going to have some blood and gore. So I wasn't too maddened or shocked by it. If there was one thing I was disappointed in is Castlevania is about you scrolling up a castle and battling monsters. Most of the antagonists for the first four episodes are humans as the church is a bunch of corrupt jerks in this one. You know, they're the ones who accidentally set Dracula's wrath upon the world. They're the ones who excommunicated the Belmonts. They're going after Sypha tribe, the speakers. So basically, they set Dracula's wrath upon the world because they didn't know what they were doing, condemning an innocent woman as a witch. And then they're going out and basically trying to persecute anybody and everybody who can stop them. And yes, the main leader of the church who, you know, isn't going to be back for the next season because they kill him off as a one-dimensional bad guy. He's boring, he's creepy, and he just doesn't fit. So, you know, hopefully they'll get some better bad guys in for the church or, you know, more developed characters for the church. Just, you know, eventually they're going to have to soothe the ways between Trevor Belmont and the rest of the clan in order for the story to work out because, you know, at the end of Castlevania 3 and by the time Curse of Darkness, the Belmont family is part of the whole operation to make sure that vampires like Dracula never come back. So, be interesting to see what they do there, but just having all the clergy be jerks is kind of one-dimensional, and I don't know what they're going to do in order to redeem it. Killing off the main bad guy, the bishop's a good start, but... I said a lot of work to do in that area as well. So um, let's see here. One other thing I guess I should talk about is yes, this is an adult theme, so there's plenty of blood and gore. Um, but there's also some cussing, and as far as that goes, that was one part I kind of disagreed with. I don't mind cussing. I don't mind the f bomb, and it's done in humor, or if it's done to really elaborate a scene. But when you're doing it to be edgy, to be cool, to be hip, and it's so freaking obvious that's what you're doing, that does annoy the hell out of me. You know, it's like, you're not being edgy, you're not being cool, you're being a dork who needs his mouth washed out with soap. And that does happen a little here. Um, sometimes the F-bomb's used when it's called for and it impacts the scene properly. But there's a lot of times where I just got that feeling that it was being used because they wanted to make it more adult, quote-unquote. And when that happens, it does piss me off. Um, I was kind of saddened to see some of this. It brought it down, you know, lower than what it needs to be. Still, what we got for four episodes was pretty good. There's going to be another eight episodes coming soon. Um, animation is expensive, and I guess Netflix is trying to tighten their budget when it comes to their original movies and TV series. So, you know, making sure that this gets a pilot before they actually pour money into it, because like I said, animation is, is expensive, is probably a wise idea. Let's hope that Fultron next season will also be good, because I think that's coming out in the, another month, the season three of Fultron. 
and I hope it turns out to be just as good as this. And I hope success for the Castlevania series keeps on coming. In the meantime, I hope Konami also manages to get off their rear ends and actually make a Castlevania game. Fans would love to see a new Castlevania game in the mix, whether it's a classic 2D platformer, whether it's a Metroidvania, or whether it's a 3D action game. I'm pretty sure fans would be enjoyed to see a new Castlevania game, just as long as it's not a mobile game or a bachinko machine. <laughs> Anyways, this is Tommy the Game Master, thanking you for listening and signing out.